Hey there, beautiful people. Uh, my name is Faith Hunter, and um, <laughs> I'm 53. <laughs> I'm actually recording this because people are always wondering what I do for my wellness routine and all that stuff. And so I'll um, just move through this little yoga practice and just kind of talk a little bit about my my journey and if you guys like this kind of deep dive into my life um i might record some more so again 53 and let me turn my music down <laughs> there we go um i have been moving my body, actively moving my body with intention, I should say, since I was about four years old. I start dancing. Uh, my mom put me in dance class at around four, three or four, and I remember my mom telling me that when she took me to the dance studio here in Louisiana, the teacher was like, she's too young. She's too young. My mom was like, mm, mm she's not too young. She takes good direction. She catches on really fast. And um, yeah, put her in the class. And so they put me in the class with five and six year olds. And that first year of the dance rehearsal, or the first year of the recital, I should say, I was uh, right there on the front row. <clears throat> so I'm actually recording this post a three mile walk. So I took a three mile walk this morning. And while I was walking, I was like, you know, people are always asking me what I do to stay in shape and stay healthy and stay vibrant. So, three miles of walking um, outside. Sometimes I get on the treadmill. And walk a few miles, a uh, mile or two, I should say. And then I also do a little weight training but my primary practice is yoga. And my primary practice of movement is yoga. So before I go on, I just do want to pause for a moment and just kind of set my personal intention for this really short yoga practice. And just kind of giving gratitude for my day already. Right, it's been such a blessing. It's not only just to be able to wake up, walk my dog. <sighs> we have the option to take a morning walk and then move right into my yoga practice. Massive gratitude for my life, all my blessings. And maybe the rest of my day be filled Love, positivity, joy, and mindful intention. Yeah. All right. So from those years of moving my body actively sometime around, I want to say 13, 14, I started really looking at what I eat. I had a an allergic reaction to some Taco Bell. <laughs> and it's not all Taco Bell. I, I don't eat Taco Bell now. But anyway, I had an allergic reaction to um, some pesticides that were actually on the vegetables in my taco salad. And it was really bad. I mean, I was like in hives and everything. And after that, I started really looking at what I consume um, 
and the things that I eat. And the interesting part is that, I mean, I grew up, we always ate really fresh food. Um, fresh meat, like it came from the farm. I mean, everything was all farm grown. I mean, I grew up in the country. We did get some things from the grocery store, of course, but my mom cooked every day. And if my mom wasn't cooking, we had, um, I usually don't tell people this, but maybe it's important right now. I grew up with a housekeeper. We had a housekeeper um, from the age of, I think I was six years old or six months old when she came in. And she was there until I was, I mean, full time she was there until I was probably like 19 years old. And so between my mom and her cooking, it was like fresh food every day. So the moment we would come home from school, there was fresh food and whatnot. But of course, you know, when you are in high school, I'm just kind of stretching out, by the way, guys, um, then I'm gonna move a little bit more. Um, but when you're in high school, you want to like do all those things. You want to go out to those fast food restaurants. You want to hang out with your friends. You know, you don't want that fresh food. And so that allergic reaction resulted in me readjusting my thoughts and my perspective around food. So I started leaving out a lot of the fast food, uh, just kind of left most of it alone. And then at some point later in high school, I think I was probably like about 16, 17, I started trying the, the vegetarian route, and played around with that a little bit. And definitely looking at labels and whatnot. And then by the time I was in college, I was full on vegetarian. <laughs> And in the process of that, I was, of course, dancing every day, um, be it with a drill team, a dance company, one or the other, or both at the same time. Actually, during high school, it was both at the same time. And that required me to be really not just aware of what I was consuming, but even how I was taking care of my, my body. So those are my early years. And then of course, as I grew up and I became an adult, I became a little bit more mindful, meticulous, anal. I mean, I'm a Virgo. So really looking at what I consume and how I treat my body. every day. How I treat my body every day was always on the top of my mind. But don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I love, love, love some good wine. I mean, I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> um, I love some really good wine. I love good food. But I know that I can't consume, right? If I want to stay healthy and vibrant, I knew this in my 20s, if I want to stay healthy and vibrant throughout my years, I need to be mindful of what I consume. And so I started thinking about, especially my maternal grandmother, she always had a garden. And so just thinking about, you know, she didn't eat fast food. I mean, lived to be like late 80s, almost 90 years old, I think. And I was like, man, I want I want to live to be that age. So as I'm kind of moving here, I'm just kind of getting my my spine warmed up so that I can move in a little bit more dynamic way. But before I do that, I want to do a little breath work. So I'm going to do. Um, breath of fire just to create a little more heat in my body. I'm already warm from that walk, by the way, but I just want to create a little more heat in my body so that I can 
burn off any toxins that may be sitting around, both physically as well as mentally. <sighs> and I do have work to do. Hey, Seth, I do have work to do, so I want to maintain a little focus so I'm going to bring my thumb and then middle finger not middle finger my thumb and ring finger together for Surya Mudra and Surya is sun in Sanskrit the translation is sun it's kind of like Surya Namaskar sun salutations this is Surya Namaskars so I'm going to do Surya Mudra so that I can stay vibrant and active for the rest of the day and my mind stays clear breath, holding my breath, just letting that energy move around. Mm, that felt absolutely delicious. I have an Apple Watch and I just realized I did not press the yoga button. I like to keep track of what I do. <laughs> I like to keep track of my steps. I like to keep track of my food. I'm like super disciplined. I think that discipline comes from... Um, my father was in the military, but also growing up as, as a ballet dancer, I did ballet, modern, jazz, tap, but the ballet is just extremely disciplined. So I think I, I get it from that, combined with the fact that I'm a Virgo, my sun sign, and my moon sign is Capricorn, and my rising sign is Libra, just in case anybody wanted to know. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, let's get in a down dog. So, the other thing I think is important, um, not just physical movement, but just like mindful intention, just being aware of where you are in your life. So doing just like these nice daily check-ins. I think have been really instrumental in me staying healthy and vibrant. And yeah, in that thought of like doing these mindful check-ins, it's also been about asking for help. And so in those moments when I am feeling challenged or struggled or having difficulty, I will seek out therapy and Counseling, I think that's so important. It's always important to have someone else to to talk to, to share your thoughts. I also do a lot of journaling. I started journaling when I was in, I think, junior high. Yeah, sometime in the 80s. Um, I started journaling as a result of actually family count well I guess I don't want to say it was family counts but it was kind of group counseling um, both of my brothers were diagnosed with HIV in the 80s and of course our family was going through a lot and so I remember one of the counselors suggested that I journal my thoughts, and so I started doing that, and I've been doing that ever since, and that's really, really helped. So I really think that, you know, when you think about the food, the thoughts, the things, the external environment, all the things that we consume, if you can control it, right, if you are have the discipline to control what is coming in, it definitely will aid you in navigating stress, anxiety, depression. So being mindful of my own thoughts, being mindful of the things that I consume mentally as well as physically consume have assisted me.
<laughs> my dog Sebastian's walking around. I think, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I've had this dog for 17 years and definitely his presence in my life, his love in my life has assisted me in also staying healthy and vibrant. I, again, kind of growing, going back to my childhood, we grew up with animals. I, mean, I grew up in the southern part of the United States. I grew up in Louisiana, grew up in a rural community. Both sets of grandparents had farms, so there, was, there were always cows, horses. Um, that's when I learned how to ride a horse. Um, pigs, <laughs> a little bit of everything. Random snakes, dogs, cats. Yeah, and so we always had family dog. Growing up, I think we had three, two or three um, dogs growing up. And of course, as an adult, I was like, I loved animals. And so I knew how important it was for, for me to have an animal. So I've had cats at different moments in time in my life and now I have my babushka, my baby boy, my sweet baby boy, Sebastian. And he's 17 years old. I feel like I want to do another breathing practice, another breath, a little more breath of fire. Do another round. Actually, that particular round I did it with my toes curled under because I just wanted to stretch out my arches and stimulate all of those nerve endings in the soles of my feet. I thought it would feel really nice. I think I'm going to stay here for like another minute or so, just like opening that energy up the pathways through my feet. And if you guys don't know, the energy moves and radiates all the way up because we have all of those nerve endings like literally there our liver our spleen our our stomach <laughs> all of those nerves are sitting in our feet they rise all the way up through our legs move through our spine <sighs> one more breath Ooh. so if you do this make sure you slowly 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 come out oh yeah Drop the tops of those feet on the mat. Give my hips a little another rock. Now I also, along with staying active, eating healthy 90% of the time, <laughs> 80 to 90% of the time, depends on where I am. I also think it's really important in being mindful of what's coming in, right? Internally, mentally. I also think it's important to surround yourself with, with really amazing people. And one thing that Maybe one thing that I find is super important is that I try to surround myself with really good friends. Um, now that I'm back in Louisiana, I live in New Orleans now, and so now I have family around me, which is really sweet and beautiful. So if I tell anyone, be mindful of who you're around, because if they're not sending positive vibes to you if they are not working on themselves in some shape or form, that's not gonna be good. So, again, this is just kind of a light little movement today because I've already walked. Just getting in a few stretches. I'm gonna stretch these quads my hips definitely since I did a walk but I also wanted to get some core work in
So the other thing, people often ask me, they're like, oh my God, you're 53, you're a single. Why are you a single? <laughs> I'm single because I made choices. <laughs> I made choices. Um, I was married. I got married in my 20s. I was married in my late 20s to my 30s. Um, I was divorced in my 30s. <laughs> Just in case people are curious, you know, I'm just going to tell it all today. I'm, I'm, <laughs> um, it didn't work out. Uh, very nice human being, like very nice, kind man. Um, but our priorities were different as we started to get older. And one of his main priorities was he definitely wanted children. Not that I did not want children, I just didn't want children in my 20s. And so, as a result, he chose differently. I thought about having them um, with other partners, right, early, like later on in my life. But I also wanted to be really mindful. I'm like, you know, if I decide to have a child with someone, that means that that individual is going to be in my life for the rest of my life. <laughs> so, as God had it, um, because I did talk to God about it, I definitely did. I was like, God, only, only if this is part of your plan for me. And it was not. I had other things to do with my life. I'm going to do one more little set of core work. Open this blanket. And then I'm going to get into the hips. Ooh. All right. I love doing this. This is like, it looks really easy, but it's freaking hard. This next thing I'm about to do. Um, I was in physical therapy at one point in my life because I had an injury with my spine and specifically C7 and T1 with my neck area and it's really important to keep your core strong so my physical therapist showed me this little core movement so the navel is drawing in towards your spine the spine is of course drawing down towards the earth so that means the tailbone is extending forward the knees are bent kind of like in this L shape and you alternate legs and arms, right? So opposite arm and leg. I don't know if I can talk through this, but we're gonna try. I'm not gonna be able to keep count. <laughs> I don't really count a lot. I mean, I count when I'm teaching, but I just wanna make sure that I'm getting in a nice little workout, a nice little movement, mindful and intentional yet dynamic and challenging. Ooh. So yeah, where, where was I? Oh, children. So yeah, so got divorced, didn't have children. And then, you know, I kind of dated. I had other long-term relationships in my life. Single right now, single lady in the house. I became single um, over a year ago, and that's when I moved to New Orleans to be with my family because I needed some grounding after that relationship. I needed some love and protection and care, comfort and ease. I needed to live the soft life. I needed to live the laissez-faire life. That's what I feel like I'm doing right now. I mean, I'm working, don't get, don't get it twisted. But I'm definitely, oh, wow. It's a different vibe here. We are currently in Mardi Gras season. And so this city just stays so festive and I love it. It's culturally, it's so full and vibrant and New Orleans has been so healing for me. It's, um, I posted a couple of weeks ago, I think it was like around December 17th or 18th, 
I post it on my IG account. It's like, my return healed me. And it did. I mean, it's just like returning here. It healed parts of me that I didn't know wasn't unhealed. <laughs> like, it, not only was I healing from a very toxic relationship that I didn't even realize was toxic until the end, or as it was starting to come to an end, um, because there was a lot of infidelity that I was unaware of. Um, but it only made sense as I look back. I didn't see everything. Um, anyway, but coming here allowed me to reset, realign, revisit what is most important for me. And it allowed me to connect even deeper to who I am authentically. And it allowed me to listen. Uh, I constantly come back to that listening. And the listening definitely is the listening of my ancestors. I was sharing with the spiritual group that I go to here in New Orleans. And it's a collection of people that are interested in wellness practices, healing, spiritual modalities. And so we meet on Sundays. I don't go every Sunday, but I try and go, I try and go as often as I possibly can. I'm sharing with them since being here, my, my great grandmother on my maternal side. She comes to me in my dreams. She comes to me on my walks. She loves chatting. And she loves showing me things. Opening my eyes to so many different things. Opening my eyes to myself. Okay, I think that's enough. Whew, that just felt good. Mm. Do another down dog and then get into these hips. <laughs> All right, just gonna slide this leg through. Extend my left leg back, checking all my toes there. Mm. Come on down to my forearms. So I'm just taking a little pigeon pose. It's perfect as I was talking about my great grandmother. I moved right into my hips. Our hips hold a significant amount of emotions. past experiences and traumas. Even those moments are not just the traumas that we personally have experienced, but even those traumas our ancestors have experienced. We carry that. Hmm. So if you're still hanging out and watching this with me, and just think about your ancestors, what they've experienced in their, their lives, but how their resilience, their brilliance, their tenacity, their ingenuity, their divine wisdom, continues to assist you every day. Get into this quad. 
The left side. Right leg back. Mm. Ooh, yes, this left side. The left side is our feminine side. <laughs> mm. I have to say, it's more open than it was yesterday. I don't know what was going on yesterday. Probably because I was doing a lot of work yesterday. I woke up working, so I was definitely that that masculine energy of go get it, mm, mm, mm. not the softness. This yesterday was pretty edgy. Today's been, it's Friday. Slow down, soft life. I'm living a soft life. That's what I want to do. Mm. Not want to do. Actually, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Hmm. So kind of going back to those things that keep me healthy, vibrant, I think one of them definitely is creating these soft moments for myself, like very intentional soft moments for myself. So, of course, doing a very easy, soft, slow Yoga practice, or I love a good yin practice, I love a good restorative practice, a slow flow, kind of like how I'm kind of moving today. But also, at night, mm. I'll take a few more breaths here. At night, my, I have my lights in my home programmed. So right around 7 o'clock, my home becomes the red light zone. <laughs> Basically, all the lights in my house, where the, the lamps, they all turn to red, because I usually don't, like now, I don't really have lights on. It's just sunlight coming in. So if, even if I'm at my desk working, there's a lamp in there that clicks on, and it's like red light, 7 o'clock, and that's kind of my cue to slow down, wind down, and stop. I take lots of, there we go, that's enough for that hit. Wow. I take enough, plenty, I, I don't know. I don't know, if there, there can never be plenty. I take lots of salt baths. So I have to get at least one to two in a week. Last little vinyasa here. I also don't hesitate if I feel tired, exhausted, I stop. I don't push through. Um, I take those walks, right, kind of like I did today, a nice three-mile walk with no destination other than at some point I will return home. Sometimes I just kind of curl up on the sofa, read, hang out, watch TV. Music is always playing in my home from morning to evening. And I dance. I dance a whole lot. So I definitely have um, a really good 
I mean, that, when I say good, it's good for me. Skin routine. My skin routine is simple. I don't overdo it. I think maybe that's something my mom <laughs> taught me because she didn't really have much of a skin routine. It was pretty basic. But hey, she has amazing skin. She's always had amazing skin. I mean, so amazing that she can fall asleep with makeup on her face and wake up and not have a single pimple or blemish. I don't think I've ever seen a pimple or blemish on her face. So I keep my skin routine simple and easy. Nothing harsh, everything that I use, all the products I use are very mild. So. I also put um, oil on my face for balancing. I did a quick IG, did it? No, it was on YouTube. I did a YouTube short where I was putting some castor oil on my face and, and on my body. I put a lot on my body, but I put a little bit on my face, my eyes, my lips and stuff before I go to bed. It's a nice little routine. But other than that, I don't do masks every week. I might do one mud mask a month, and then sometimes I can go like, I don't know, three months without doing a mask. But I think it's part of it is that I don't need to do all those things because I'm putting quality food in my body. I take my vitamins, I drink water, I have other tinctures that I use. I mean, there's such an assortment of things that I consume to help me stay stay healthy. So again, I don't need to do all those things. I don't need to put all that stuff on my skin. Keep it simple. All right. Let's take a little moment to, um, to meditate. And before I drop into my meditation, I just want to say thank you for hanging out till the end of this. And definitely if um, there are things you want to know more about, drop them in the comments. And have a beautiful, blessed, and fabulous day. Thanks for hanging out with me.